Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome to the premiere of Real Estate Talk. Um, this is our own channel to talk about everything real estate. That's awesome for us real estate professionals. We're going to be talking about how to work with buyers, how to work with sellers, scripts, lead generation, social media, open house, and building a team, and much, much more. But today, we're going to be talking about a very important subject, and that is the seven-figure niche market in real estate. That's right. You heard it. The seven-figure niche market in real estate. But before I get into all the juicy stuff about what it is, I know you're excited to hear all about it. I want to tell you first about who I am. I am Lorraine Santa Rosa. I'm a real estate professional here in San Diego. I specialize in helping active duty military and veterans buy and sell homes. I was a Navy spouse for 20 years, so I know firsthand the experiences of moving from one duty station to the next. I know all about the long deployments. I know all about feeling like you're a single parent because really that's what the life was about mostly. And for, I hear it often said that the job of a spouse is the toughest job there is in the military. And for those of you who are spouses, know that is definitely the truth. Um, but I really want to share with you how I got into the real estate business. And that is um, based on my own home buying experience way back in the early 90s when then my ex-husband and I wanted to buy our first home not long after we got married in Jacksonville, Florida and use his VA benefit. The agent that we worked with had no clue about the VA home loan process. In fact, we were left looking uh, up all the information ourselves uh, on the process as we went along. In fact, I believe the agent was a little concerned, to be honest with you, as to whether or not we would even close the deal with the VA home loan. And you know, to be honest, that was the wrap back then. The VA home loan was known to take a long period of time and was difficult. But things have changed in today's market. Nowadays, you can close a VA home loan in 21 days or less. So I got to close my home, and I also helped other military families that I knew in Jacksonville to buy their home using the VA home loan benefit because, after all, it's the only loan, um, even now today, that you can get um, to purchase a home with zero down. So that was my experience experience back then and I never forgot it. So when I came back stateside after being overseas, I started looking at a career in real estate and um, I went ahead, got my license and I've not turned a uh, look back since and that was in 2004. So um, I also want to share with you that I am an agent with the Keller Williams uh, franchise here in San Diego at the Metro office. So I want to give a big shout out to all my Keller Williams listeners that are out there and this is not um, to say that I am going to leave out all my other real estate fans but I just wanted to uh, say a big shout out to all the Keller Williams agents. I also want to share with you that um, I am on several boards here. I am on a a uh, board called the, called the Veterans Association of Real Estate Professionals, VA Rep. Um, what we do as an organization, and I serve as the government affairs officer for that the local chapter, what we do is first we educate um, the real estate professional about working with the VA home buyer, and then secondly, we educate the uh, VA home buyer about the benefits of the VA home loan. And if you've ever worked with a veteran or active duty person, you know most of them have no clue what the VA home loan is about or even the process. So those are the key things that we do uh, with the VA Rep organization. I'm also a member of NARED, the National Association of Real Estate Brokers. And if you're listening and you're a part of NARED, a big shout out to you as well. Um, I, I'm the local chapter here in San Diego of NARED. I am the legislative chair. And the other board that I sit on is the um, Black American Political Association of California. Um, I also want to share that um, I have positioned myself as a local expert not only in my office, not only in San Diego, but nationwide and even overseas because a lot of um, veterans are stationed overseas as well. And so I get referrals from all around the country. I also want to share 
that I am featured in the latest NAR certification. That's the National Association of Real Estate uh, Realtors. Um, their newest certification is the military certification. It's called MRP, Military Relocation Professional. And you can find me there. There's a one-page article that uh, talks about me and my services to the, the veteran community. And I get calls from around the country from agents who take that certification call me up and they usually have a lot of questions about how to get into the market and so forth and I do my best always to answer. Um, the other key thing I want to share as well about my career in real estate is in 2012 I um, after experiencing a number of deals fall through due to the VA um, appraisals taking time and coming not coming in right and so forth I decided to make a change. So I went to my local congressman, then Bob Filner, who later became the mayor for a few minutes here in San Diego. Um, he assisted me with shortening the VA appraisal guidelines from 10 business days to 7. That was huge here in the Phoenix region, which includes San Diego. And I still hear today from mortgage professionals that that's made a huge difference in the process and now it's also contributed to us being able to close loans in 21 days or less. So with that said, enough of me and what I do. Going, Let's go back to um, what I mentioned earlier and that is what is that seven figure niche market that you can tap into and really grow your business? Well, I decided to share my background, my experience and wherewithal in working with veterans and use it as an opportunity to share with other real estate agents. So today, if you're listening to me, you're going to hear a major, major, major announcement. I am going to, are you ready for this? I am going to launch today my military certification. That's right, my own military certification. It's called Agents for Veterans. And if you're listening to this, you're the first person to even hear about it. You're the first person that's going to have the opportunity to sign up for it, take advantage of all the tools that they are available, and tap into the real estate market, the seven-figure niche market. Um, that's going to enable you to be an expert to position yourself to uh, earn more income. So you've heard the big announcement and like I said it is big. Um, now you're probably thinking Lorraine that's all good but how does that really benefit me as a real estate agent? I'm here in, San I'm here in um, uh, Texas, I'm here uh, in Baltimore. How does that really help me or Jacksonville, you know, listening to this? Well, it's for the agent that is already aware of the veteran market or the military market and has been trying to tap into that market with using various conventional methods like um, running ads, um, putting up flyers, calling other agents, doing door knocking, cold calling and farming. But all, with all that, really not much results because, listen, I get all these calls from other agents around the country. Lorraine, how do I tap into the market? I've tried this, I've tried that, and I, and I tell them. So this military certification, Agents for Veterans, is going to really help you um, with that. Then, you probably heard this from Shay Brown. He talks about it a lot. You already know, if uh, there's no leads, you have no hope no leads, no hope. This is where if you're the agent that wants to be in the real estate business but has no leads and no hope. And at the end of the day when you have no leads and no hope you really um, have to face yourself and you have to face your family. But my military certification, Agents for Veterans, will help you with that. And then there's the agent who has no certification no experience in working with military family, um, but are they also not sure how to even go about it. How do we start? You know, what method do we use? Well, I share all of that in my military certification, Agents for Veterans. 
Then there are those agents who, who um, keep trying different things. And I know you've all seen those agents. They start out with one idea today. They run with it. It doesn't work. Tomorrow they start another idea. And quite frankly, they throw a lot of things at the wall. It doesn't stick. And so all that excitement that they started out with in the morning ends by night and they because they don't get results. My military certification will help you with that. Then we all know these agents, the agents that spend so much time volunteering and not producing. They're always at a meeting, they're always on a conference call, they're always at a conference doing this, doing that, but not really paying attention to their business. But my certification will help that agent, if you're listening, to get back on track and focus on your business. Then there are those agents who don't have listings at all and you know listings is leverage. So they don't have listings that they can pitch at the local um, office meeting, broker's caravan, um, and they really don't know what having a listing is like and, and getting buyers to call on that sign because that's the low hanging fruit when you have um, listings. As they say, listings is leverage. My certification, military uh, certification, Agents for Veterans will help you with that. And you know, there are agents who are not productive at all, just outright not productive. And you know, time is money. As you know, the most successful agents are the ones that are productive. So, again, my certification, Agents for Veterans, will help you with that. Then there are there, those agents, no matter what they do, they just can't hit their goals. They, you know, they try all different things, but at the end of the day, they don't hit their goals. End of the month, they don't hit their goals. The end of the year, they don't hit their goals. So he, we're here to show you how to do that. So um, that's what my certification, Agents for Veterans, will help you do. And then there are those agents that are always going to training classes. We know them, especially the new ones. They're always they, they're overwhelmed with all this training. They feel like, you know what, they've got to keep going to the training sessions to get ready to get ready. So they really don't launch. Well, we're here to show you as part of the certification how to get out of the training mode, um, take what you know, and go for it. That's the uh, military certification, Agents for Veterans. Now, my certification is good for um, agents of all um, experience levels. Whether you are a rookie or you're a seasoned agent, my certification will work for you. So here's all the different um, ways, if you're listening as an agent, that uh, this certification can help you or perhaps you can relate to some of these. And you're probably thinking to yourself, yeah, yeah Lorraine, I see myself in one thing, I see myself in two, three, maybe all things. Oh boy. Um, but, you know, you see yourself here and you go, okay, I get it, but what are the true, true benefits of um, signing up for Agents for Veterans? Well, I'm going to spend these last few minutes sharing these three key benefits of um, signing up for my own certification, Agents for Veterans. The first one is you're going to be tapping into a niche market of 22 million veterans. Now, of that 22 million veterans, there are only 1.9 million active VA loans. So let me repeat that. 22 million veterans nationwide, only 1.9 of those have active VA home loans right now. So you do the math. It's overwhelming. There's so much business out there. That's why we called it the seven-figure niche market. And so that's one of the key things that my certification, Agents for Veterans, will do. The other thing is, as I've explained, it is a certification on how you can service the military market. Yes, there are other certifications out there. And um, I've just shared with you, with you that I'm a part of the NAR certification. But what those certifications do is tell you about the market. They don't give you the tools and the strategy. That's key and how to really tap into that market. And with my certification, I decided to take it to that level. That's why I'm working with Shay and Trevor, and we're coming up with all kind of really cool ideas that I'm using in my business, and I'm willing to share with you in my certification. 
And because you're listening today, I'm going to share with you something that uh, Trevor has told me to hold on to because it's such a, one of the key things. And I said, you know what, Trevor, I've got to share this today. And that is, uh, if you're an agent out there and you've done an open house, I'm sure most of you have, um, and that home buyer comes through and they're all excited, they love the house, they love the bedrooms, the field, they see themselves in it, and you know what a traditional open house today, um, most agents, they hand the flyer, right? The flyer that lists the, 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 de the property's uh, description, information, and there's a little bit of branding on you there with your phone number, and you know that client takes the, the piece of paper, get in the car, they may not even know where they put it, they could have lost it, you know. Um, but, you know, that's the traditional way. What we're working on, imagine this for a minute. The buyer comes into the open house, they love the house, you know, they're talking to you as the agent, and they say, you know, we'd like some more information. Instead of handing them that piece of paper, you're going to ask them to text a word to a particular number that links them directly to the listing of, on that uh, open house that you're holding that is linked to your website that they can look at at any time on their mobile device at home, share with their friends, family, uncle, cousins, whoever. But, you, you know, they've got that information right there. And you, met, you know, if you listen to Trevor, most people are using their handheld devices now. Um, but here's the bonus to that. You would have captured their information. Let me say that again. You would have captured their information so that you can convert them um, into bias. Now, you're not going to see that anywhere. It's not out there. We're way ahead of the curve. And we're working on that piece. I know you're excited about it already, and so am I. Um, there's also uh, marketing pieces that we're putting together that you're not seeing anywhere else that is just for this certification because we want to give you the tools, like I said, to go out there and earn some of that money that we're talking about, the seven-figure niche. Also, the third thing uh, that's a benefit about my certification, my own Agents for Veterans certification, is the opportunity to increase your income. We've been talking about that because um, we want to see other agents tap into this market and take advantage of it. So um, if you want to take advantage of all the marketing tools that I'm going to be offering you that you won't see anywhere else, you won't hear about it anywhere else, you'll have people in your office going, um, what's that thing that you're using? Because that's what they're going to call it, that thing, because they wouldn't have seen it or heard of it anywhere. And you're going to be able to tell them. You'll be out, uh, uh, out ahead of the curve. Then you, I, I'll ask that you go over and sign up on my um, website, agentsforveterans.com, for my certification. If you're the agent that can't hit their goals and want to tap into another market to reach that goal, then sign up for my military certification, Agents for Veterans, and go to agentsforveterans.com. If you're looking to um, tap into another market, have another stream of income coming in, you're probably a listing agent somewhere, and you've not thought of the military market, then we've got the tools to help you. So go ahead, sign up for um, my certification on agentsforveterans.com. So, it's been fun hanging with you today, fun sharing this new announcement about my certification. And I hope to see you back here along um, uh, with, you'll get to see other agents share a lot of stuff about real estate. But I, I hope to be back here to, say, to share some big nuggets with you that's going to help you um, succeed in your business and take advantage of seven niche marketing. Until next time, I'm Lorraine Santa Rosa. They also call me the VA Queen here in San Diego. Have a wonderful day.
everybody. I am Barrett Matthews of E2E Systems. I am pleased as punch to be here today. I am glad to talk to you all about action and productivity. You see, I have a company called E2E Systems. What does E2E Systems mean? E2E means employee to entrepreneur. We started this company so that we can help you all become entrepreneurs because I firmly believe that everyone has the capability and some of you have a good strong desire to be entrepreneurs. Well, I want to share a little bit with you today about what we do here and what I can do for you and how I got to this point. So what I want to do is share this with you right here. This is me. I'm Barrett Matthews. As I said, I'm a speaker. Um, as many of you know, many of you have heard me speak before. I have spoken to hundreds and thousands of people before about what we believe at E2E Systems being that you all can be entrepreneurs and we can show you how to get there and we help you to get there and overcome that mindset that keeps you locked in that employee mindset. We want to break you of those chains and get you where you want to be. That's what we do at E2E Systems because I don't think any of you want to stay in that rut that you're in. We want to help you get out of that. Also, I'm an author. I wrote the book called Why Didn't You Get It Done? That's right. Why Didn't You Get It Done? I know some of you will feel your toes being stepped on as I say those words. Well, what, we, what that book does is it helps you get off your assets. As a matter of fact, the subtitle is a guide to helping you get off your assets because many of you ask yourself sometimes on a weekly, monthly, I, don't hope, I hope it's not daily, but you ask yourself all the time, why didn't I do that? Why didn't I get it done? I wish I had done that. Someone else did it and I didn't do it. You have to stop asking yourself that and you have to take action and make those things happen for yourselves, for your family, for your community, those people who depend on you, those people who know that you have something inside you. You have to dig deep within you and pull that out. Well, this book that I wrote, Why Didn't You Get It Done, can help you to do that. I am also a coach. I coach people in becoming entrepreneurs. I also coach those of you who are entrepreneurs to get your business to that level that you know it needs to get to. Some of you are struggling, some of you need to go to that upper echelon, but you just don't know how. You have a little fear. You don't have what it takes to get there right now, but you know someone can help you if they just give you a little bit of push. Well, that's what we do at E2E System. So hopefully we can help you get there. Our company, as I said, is, in, is designed to take you from employee to, to entrepreneur. Our motto is moving you from working for a living to living your dreams. If you notice, it says moving you from working for a living to living your dreams. You have to move to make that happen. You can't stay where you are. Um, as someone once told me recently, you can't get to second with your foot still on first. You have to take your foot off first base in order to get to second. You can't stay in your comfort zone. You're going to have to do something that makes you uncomfortable. I always tell people, success and comfort don't mix. You have to decide to make yourself uncomfortable in order to get where you're going to be. And also, success and convenience don't mix. Sometimes you're going to have to drive a long distance. Sometimes you're going to have to fly a long distance, like George Frazier's Power Networking Conference. Sometimes you're going to have to pay some money, make yourself uncomfortable. Sometimes it's not going to be convenient because you know you don't want to pay that bill or go to that concert or watch that movie on cable or something. But you know that you need to pay something in order to get something. Sometimes you just have to put out and sacrifice in order to get where you want to be. Well, we help you to do those things at E2E Systems. Now, action. Action is one of the things I talk about all the time. A lot of people call me the action guy because I'm always talking about people taking action. As a matter of fact, my credo to people, I always say, take action. Well, action doesn't just get you anywhere by itself. You have to have some productivity. You have to have a goal in mind when you're doing that action. If you're just acting with nowhere in sight, you're just going to be running around like a chicken with his head cut off. And if you notice, a chicken with his head cut off is still being very active. It's running around with no direction. Some of you are running your businesses like that. Some of you are running your life like that. 
Well, the thing is, you have to set a goal. You have to write it down. You have to put it somewhere where you can see it. You have to repeat that goal to yourself. And don't be afraid to tell other people what your goal is. Have someone to hold you accountable to make sure you're productive in getting where you want to go. So once you have that action and you pair it with the productivity, you can start to see success. Now, let's talk about success for a minute. You want to get to where you feel that goal has been achieved. That's wonderful. That can be considered success. To some of you, success is just moving in the right direction. And, and guess what? That can be considered a level of success. But once you reach success, and this is where it gets deep, you have to get to be one of those people that moves from success to significance. You see, a lot of us out there are living our lives thinking that we're successful. We may have the financial status. We may have the, the property status. We may have the name recognition status. But are you being significant? Is someone else's life changed because of what you have done to help them? You may not have had to do it directly. It may be indirectly. You may have started something that moved someone into doing something later on in their life, and you may not have, have, have ever even met them. But is your life significant? When you leave this earth, is someone going to say that you were successful in making money and reaching goals and dreams that you set? Or is someone going to say that person made a difference? Where will you be? Can you say where you will be? If not, you need to make a change in your life and take some action. As it says here at the bottom of the page, your life will not change without action. So if you're not one of those people who has taken action, what's holding you back? As I mentioned to you, my book is called Why Didn't You Get It Done? A Guide to Helping You Get Off Your Assets. The book alone is just a read. The book with action can change your life. Ask yourself, are you ready to change your life? If so, you need to get the book and read it cover to cover. And when you're done reading it cover to cover, put it down. Think for a second. Read it again. Take some notes when you read it again. Make sure that you are ingesting what you have learned. Make sure you've ingested enough so that you can Get out there, do the things you need to do to get successful, and then move forward to be significant. Because you guys have to understand, if you're on this feed here, you can make a difference. As a matter of fact, I want everyone to type into the feed, I can make a difference. Type in right now, I can make a difference, because you guys can do it right now. To collectively, think about it, all of us collectively can change some things. What are you going to do? Are you going to sit back and keep watching your computer screen? Or are you going to make a difference by getting up off your assets and doing something? So I wrote this book. I wrote this book for certain people. I wrote this book for people that constantly have to ask themselves, why didn't I get that done? Why didn't I do that? I knew I should have done it. Why didn't I do it? Is that you? If that's you, type in the defeat, that's me. Type in, that's me. Don't be ashamed because that's the first step is admitting what the, what the problem is before we can fix it. So type in, that's me, if that, is, if that describes you. Do you start things and never finish? Is that you? Are you one of those people that starts things and never finish? There are a lot of people out there like that. Guess what? I used to be like that when I was younger. I used to be like that myself. I started things and didn't finish. But it took people to coach me. It took people to work with me and train me and hold me accountable. Everybody needs a coach. Heck, I have a coach who has a coach. So the thing is, what are you going to do? Are you going to start changing things in your life? Are you that person that's known, that's known as a great procrastinator? Are you the person that everybody says, oh, I know he won't do it. I know she's not going to get that done. Are you that person they know and, and doesn't even bother you? It should bother you if people think of you as someone who won't complete the job. Because one of these days, you're going to ask that person, 
to recommend you to someone, to help you get somewhere. And if that's always in the back of their mind that you never finished the job, why would they want to recommend you? Why is it that you are thought of that way? Why are you the procrastinator? This is why I wrote that book. Now, here's the question I need to ask you all. Are you tired of reading books that don't get you to take any action? Are you tired of reading books that just make you say, okay, that's a nice read, you know, good information. I can really use those quotes, <laughs> you know. Are, are, are those the books that you're reading? Are you ready to take action in a book? As a matter of fact, if you are ready, say, take action in the feed. Type in take action. I want you to type that in now. Now, have you ever asked yourself, why aren't I successful? Why didn't I win? Why didn't I move up? Why didn't they pick me? Why aren't I successful? Are you the person that's always asking yourself that question? Is that you? Well, it's, if it's you, you need to read that book because it still boils down to you're not getting things done. You have to complete the task in front of you. You have to be known as that person that completes the task in front of you. I take pride in being that person that when I say I'm going to do something most people around me know it's done. They know it's done. If I don't think I can do it, I'll tell them right, out, right away, I don't think I can do that. But if I am given a task and I say I'm going to do it, I do it. You need to be known as that type of person. So my last question is this. Is this if this book could show you the way, would you read it? If this book could show you how you can start getting things done, would you read it? If the answer is yes, type in I would read it. Type in I would read it. That's what I want you to type in if that is you. Type that into the feed. Now, in writing this book, I you know I did some research and I looked at what some other people had found as well as one of the things that stuck out to me was this study here by Dr. Patrick Matthew. It says, what stops you from choosing the life you want. He interviewed a lot of people and he tallied up the responses. Well, it says here that 51.3% of the people say that it's not enough money. That's why they didn't choose the life that they wanted because they didn't have the money. Well, I think many of you know that that's probably not true because People seem to get money for the things they really, really want. Have you ever been in a situation to where it was something that you really wanted and you busted your butt and you found a way, you scraped and you got the things, that, the money that you needed to get the things done? Yeah, you really wanted it. So money isn't always the issue to get things done. And there's other ways to get around doing certain things if you know how. Here's another thing. I'm not clear on what I actually want. I think that's a big one. A lot of people are not clear and concise on what they want. I always tell people, if you want to know what you really want to do, especially when it comes to being an entrepreneur, you need to find out what your passion is. What is it that you would do for free? What is it that you just love so much that you would do it for free? Now, I'm not saying you should do it for free, but if that's something that you're so passionate about that you enjoy, that's the thing that you should be clear about wanting to do. The next one, difficulty committing and taking action. Difficulty committing and taking action. Now, the biggest thing with that one is, and we have a program at E2E Systems to help you with this, is that people don't have anyone a lot of times to hold them accountable. If someone is holding you accountable and there are consequences for, for those people that don't take action, you'll find yourself taking action more. I mean, that goes back to childhood. You know, you don't do your homework, there's a consequence for it. Someone's holding you accountable for doing that. Well, somewhere we get away from that. It's time to get you back. Now, fear of failure is another one. Fear of failure is probably one of the biggest ones. And the thing is, you have to change your perspective. We have all 
gone to achieve something and not quite hit the mark on our first try. Well, that just means you got to go do it again. That's all it is. It's not a failure. It just means you didn't get to the level where you wanted. It's a learning experience. You have to learn from it. Here's another one. Not enough time. Well, there are 24 hours in a day. You just have to learn how to manage your time. You see a lot of us out there feel we just don't have time. We do this, we do that. I think any parent out there knows that you can do a lot in 24 hours, especially mothers. You guys do a whole lot in a 24-hour period. Then we move on to fear of success. Hmm. I think this one, it says 15%, but I think it should be higher than it is. Fear of success is one of the things that plague a lot of people because we think things out too much. We think, well, what if this happens and I don't know how to handle all the success that comes my way? All this money, all these people are going to want something from me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses. You ain't there yet. <laughs> You're not there yet. Worry about that problem when it comes. And I guarantee if you work to get to that level and you work really hard and you start seeing the success, usually success doesn't come, bam, you hit with a lot of success. It comes gradually and you, you grow into it. When you're growing into it, you also grow with the knowledge of how to handle success. So don't be afraid of that. Now, lack of support from others. I love this one because I was talking to a friend of mine recently who is an entrepreneur. Uh, he has a business where he actually in invented something, and he wanted to quit his job. Now, he is an engineer by trade. He also was married to a, a lawyer. They have kids in college and so forth, and he wanted to leave his job for his, his business and his invention. Well, I think you can imagine what his wife was saying to that. She didn't want him to do that. But he said, and this is what he told me, it's his dream. He can't expect her to see his dream. It's his dream. So he knew that he had to make things happen and let her see the results. Well, what has happened is it's become successful to the point where he's had to get bigger facilities, hire a staff of people. Now his business is, now don't get me wrong, he's working, but it's running at a, at a level that his wife has to respect it, and she supports him with it. So don't worry about support from others. You create that support. The last one here, limits placed on me by others. Now, I certainly dismiss this one because limits are never placed on you by others. The limits are only placed on you by yourself because you are the one who can dictate what happens and what doesn't happen, only you. Now, if you think that you suffer from any of these issues, any of these problems, I urge you to get the book, Why Didn't You Get It Done? And I'll tell you how you can get it in a little while. You need to get the book. You need to read the book. You need to tell others to read the book. I've had other people read this book and tell me how it helped them to change their lives, their situations, and to make them do things. I've had people read the first chapter and tell them it made their whole day change just from reading the first chapter. You need to get the book. Now, does entrepreneur, entrepreneurship scare you? You see, a lot of you out there want to be entrepreneurs. You say you want to be entrepreneurs. You tell everyone else, I want to leave my job. I want to start my own business. Some of you have even started your business, and then it stops. Well, you need to change that. You need to get it back in gear and put the pedal down and go. You see, the thing is about being an entrepreneur, you can't go halfway. That doesn't mean you can't start part-time, but you can't go halfway doing it because you're scared. Don't go part-time because you're scared. Go part-time because you're smart until you get things going and you're planning on leaving your job. But don't go scared. As it says here, a graveyard for a dreamer. You see all those cubicles? How many of you work in a situation that looks like that where you got, got a bunch of cubicles around you? A matter of fact, if that's you, type in cubicle jail. Type in cubicle jail because that's what you're in. You're in a jail surrounded by cubicles. Well, at E2E Systems, we want to help you to get out of that. We want to help you to start moving in the right direction of entrepreneurship because you can't be scared. 
You can't make scared money. You, you got you to get out there and make things happen on your own. So let us help you at e to Systems to take action. That's right. Take action. You're going to have to get up off your butt right now and take action. You see that drill, Sergeant? That's how we're going to do it. We're going to make sure you take action. We're going to hold you accountable. We're going to hold your hand, but we're going to hold your hand and pull you right to where you need to be. You need to let us take you where you need to go. If you can't do it yourself, you need to let us take you where you need to go. So it's time for time checkup. What does that mean? You need to make sure that your time is being used in a capacity that's going to help you to grow. If you are spending most of your time socializing with your friends on the phone, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, guess what? Your business is not growing. Do I have a Facebook account? Yes, I do. Do I have a fan page? Yes, I do. Do I use Facebook to mostly socialize? No, I don't. I use socialize, I mean Facebook to, to do business. I use Twitter to do business. I use all these things for business. Do I use my phone to socialize a lot? Not a lot. I'm usually on my phone talking business because I know that I need to get things in place so that I don't have to work for 40 years like a lot of people out there. I don't want to live the rut of life, so I need to make sure my time is used in a way that will benefit me so that I can benefit others. How is your time being used? I want you to type into the feed, time check up. Time check up, because you need a time check up. You need to make sure that you get examined to make sure that your time is being used wisely. That's what we do at E2E Systems. We probe you to make sure that all of your time is being used well. I call myself the time doctor sometimes because we are going to make sure that your time is used to its full capacity. Now, we have three action-based coaching programs at E2E Systems designed to help you become successful. All of them are designed to take to make you become successful, but they're for people at different levels in their business. So one of them is what we call the tactics program. Tactics stands for take action coaching to ensure collective success. Take action coaching to ensure collective success. Tactics is designed for people who want accountability, but they want it in a group setting, which means what we're going to do is we're going to, it's a group setting, group coaching program, and it can be virtually or in person. What we're going to do is assign you an accountability partner. That partner is going to make sure you're successful. You're going to make sure they're successful. You're going to hold on to each other to make sure that you both get things going. That's the tactics program. It's a great program. We created it at E2E Systems, and I think you'd love it. Next is the Genesis program. Genesis stands for getting each new entrepreneur, entrepreneur started initiates success. We need to get you started. It's a one-on-one -on -one coaching program that helps every new entrepreneur become successful. We meet you where you are, and we help you to get to where you need to be as a successful entrepreneur. Then we have the BOSS program. BOSS stands for Business Owner Success System. The BOSS program is a very unique coaching program. It has a 10-point success plan. What's so unique about it? Well, the BOSS program actually helps you to build a team of people to help your business become successful. What do I mean by that? Well, everybody in business needs an accountant. You need someone to help you with legal matters. You need someone to help you with marketing, branding, strategy, communicating with people. Well, that's what the boss system does. Boss system does that. It gets you in touch with people where you're going to be able to be coached by these people who will help put you in a position of success for your business. You actually have a team of people that we're going to help you to get in place for your business. Isn't that wonderful? I think it is. I think everyone would love that. Now, would you like for us to do a probe for you? What we're going to do is offer you today a free probe. That's right. You're going to get a probe for your business 
I want you to dial in, I mean, text the word, actually, text the word probe to 929-244-4323. That's 929-244-4323, or that's 4E2E. What that probe is going to do, it's going to, it's going to tell you how you're spending your time, and then we're going to let you know what you need to do to change that. Now, if you are one of those people who doesn't want to change, don't text that word probe in. If you want to change, text the word probe to 929-244-4323, and we are going to help you change at E2E Systems to make sure your business is a success and to make sure you are a success. So if you want your personal productivity probe, make sure you text that word in. So how do you get in touch with us at E2E Systems? Well, you can call us 877-443-4477. That's 877-443-4477. As it says here, get started now. Don't procrastinate. Don't ask yourself, why didn't I get it done? I don't want to have to ask you, why didn't you get it done? You need to get started now. We can help you to do that. That's our job here at E2E Systems, to help you get those things done. We want to help you. You have to want to move. You have to have that burning desire. You have to want to move into success. You have to want to take that success and make it into significance. Can you do that? Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to change? We can help you to do that. You have to get up off your assets and say, you know what? I'm tired of being where I am. As a matter of fact, I want you to type into the feed right now, I'm tired. Type in, I'm tired. If that's you, if you're someone who's ready to change, type in, I'm tired, because that's the only way you're going to change. You have to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. If you're not at that level yet, you're going to stay where you are. You're going to stay in what I call the rut of life. What's the rut of life? I'm going to tell you what the rut of life is. How many of you get up every morning when it's still dark outside? See, I, I personally, I believe that the devil created alarm clocks because I get up when God wants me to get up. You get up when it's still dark outside. You can't see where you're going because you, you that alarm clock gets you up when it's dark. You scramble around to turn it off. Then... You go into the kitchen, you drink your morning cup of nerves, that caffeine, get it in your system, you go out and, and start your car up, and God knows you hope it's not winter time because you don't have to start it up and run back inside to try to get warm again, hoping the car will warm up. Then you run back outside and go chase taillights. You chase taillights down the, down the street sucking in the exhaust fumes so you can go work at a place that you can't stand. You work with a bunch of people that you can't stand. You wouldn't even invite them to your house. You don't even call them friends, even though you act friendly with them because you can't stand being with them, but you're being fake just to keep your job. You do that where someone is telling you when you can go home, when you can take lunch, when you can take breaks, some of you when you can go to the bathroom, but you do that. Then, guess what? When the day is done, you go chase taillights again. And what do you know? When you get home, it's dark again, so you missed all the daylight hours at a place that you don't even want to be. How do you like that? Then you go home, you have an attitude because you're spending that day at a place you don't want to be, and your family sees it, and you take it out on them. You take it out on them. The kids didn't do anything to you. Your spouse didn't do anything to you, but you take it out on them. And you do this over and over again. Not the next day, not the next week, not the next month, but you do this for 30 to 40 years. That, to me, is the rut of life. Are you going to stay in the rut of life? Type into the feed, no rut of life. No rut of life. That's what I want you to type into the feed right now if you're ready to change your life. So if you're ready to change, you can go to e2esystems.com. That's www.e, the letter E, the number two, the letter E, systems.com. If you want to email us at info at e2esystems.com. Or you can check us out on Facebook at e2esystems or on Twitter at e2esystems as well. We want to make sure that you guys get things going. So if you're ready, I want you to take action and come check us out.
I'm Barrett Matthews of E2E Systems, and once again, take action. I am so excited to have the opportunity to be with you this morning. I want to thank Shay and Trevor for the opportunity to be a part of the Operation Wow with George C. Frazier. Excellent morning, Mr. Frazier. Listen, audience, I am really excited about what's about to take place. And what's about to take place is transformation. Transformation for me, because every time I share this presentation, I hear something differently. And transformation for you, because if you're watching, that means that you are working on you. Today, I'm going to share with you how to follow your yellow brick road. That's right. We're going to get into all of that. What I mean by that, how you can do it, you need paper, you need a pen, actually, you need a notebook. Because you're going to be referring back to these notes in the coming days and months. Remember I said days because we don't have any more time to waste. Are you excited? I am. Are you ready? I am. So let's get started. It's so wonderful to have an opportunity to be able to connect with individuals such as yourself. No matter what, you, you are working towards getting to the next phase and destiny track of your life. So here we go. This morning we're going to talk about personal and professional alignment, following your yellow brick road. What do I mean by that? Did you know before you entered into your mother's womb, before your parents got together, you had already been determined what your track was going to be and the success that you were created to have had already been determined. I know, I know, you may be thinking, you may even been saying, Frederica, you don't know my life. I don't. By the way, you're welcome to call me Freddie. I don't know what your life track has been. And mine is my story, and yours is your story. But guess what? You and I still have the opportunity to fulfill our heart's desire. So are you ready? Let's talk about following your yellow brick road, dreaming big. So how do you do that? When we talk about the personal and professional, one cannot be successful without the other. Our personal lives have a direct connection with our professional lives. You may be thinking, well, Frederica, I've gone to school or Freddie. I've gone to school, I've obtained higher education, I'm feeding the pavement, I'm working really consistently, I'm working on myself, all of those things are good, hold your course, do not stop. But you got it, you and I must understand that our personal lives and the character and the qualities of our character are a direct relation, must be directly correlated with our professional lives. So let's talk about the difference. When I talk about our personal life, I'm talking about the character development, I'm talking about the integral development, and I'm talking about ethical development. Does that mean that you and I won't make wrong decisions? It doesn't mean that we won't because we will. The most important piece about that is that we don't stay where those bad decisions may take us, may lead us. You and I must pull ourselves up, we must brush ourselves off, and we must keep it moving. Learn from the lessons of the decisions that were made that did not profit you. That's what I'm doing every day. I'm learning from the lessons, from the decisions that I've made that did not produce a profit, or at least a tangible profit. 
because if nothing else, the profit of those bad decisions should yield what we're not going to do again. So from that perspective, it's a profit. When we talk about the personal component of who we are, we must give attention to what do I want people to see when they look at me? Ask yourself that question. When people look at me, what do I want them to see? Do I want them to see the person who has a lot of energy, who has a lot of drive, who has presence, who has character, who will do the right thing whether someone sees them or not, who has fortitude, who has the wherewithal not to give up. Is that what you want people to see when they look at you? That's the personal side. Now, the professional side is this. We must know our craft. Let's say that right now you're still working for an organization, which is a great thing. Everyone who has employment today is a blessed person. So let's say that but you have dreams and goals and aspirations to be an employer yourself. So what's most important is that where you are right now, you are effective in establishing an exceptional craft. That's right. You want to make sure that the skill sets that you need to be effective where you are right now are always being sharpened. Do you remember? I know I'm dating myself. But when you and I were in elementary school, those were baby boomers, and we raised our hand to go to the Pilsner Shopper, we had to take our hand and turn this instrument in a cyclical fashion in order to make change to the lead pencil. Well, that's what we are doing. We are taking hold of our lives, and we are putting our lives through an instrument called life and we are allowing our lives to be pressed through every experience that we have so that the optimum person, both personally and professionally, comes out on top. So again, personal alignment, ensuring that the character and the distinctive characteristics and qualities of who you are comes out with a distinctive polished presentation of how you want people to see you. From a professional perspective, you and I want to make sure that our craft is simply unique and that it is progressive and that it is today. We don't want our craft for 2014 to reflect 1995. That won't be good. Our craft must reflect the 21st century, 2014. We must put ourselves in the company of the George Frasers. We must put ourselves in the company of the Shays and the Trevors and put your name in there. People must put themselves in the company of, say your name, that's right. People must put themselves in the company of Frederica. Why? Because we are consistent and we are purposeful in building and developing our personal and professional lives. Now, alignment, what does that mean? It means that you and I must position ourselves in agreement. Our personal and our professional lives must be positioned so there is agreement. You and I never want our talent. We never want our craft, our skills, to take us where our character can't keep us. Everybody's with me. All right, excellent. Let's keep going. Now, how to balance both the personal and the professional life. You see here this image that says it's an element of wellness. Well, there are facets of life that we must be mindful of, that we must be knowledgeable of, and that we must incorporate in our lives to show balance. As you see in the presentation that we're talking about environment, are you environmentally friendly? Are you environmentally educated, environmentally aware as it relates to your craft, your skill, your profession? Are you intellectually stimulated? 
What are you watching? What are you listening to? What are you reading? Is it consistent? Remember I just mentioned we can't have a 1995 structure developed, developmental structure, and we're in the 21st century. Our intellectual stimulation must align with our profession, our respective profession in the 21st century. Socially, we must be, you and I must be mindful, I cannot stress this, we must be mindful of our social environments, our social gatherings, our social conversations. You and I know that today, pictures can be taken of us unaware. So as you and I work to develop who we want individuals to recognize us to be, we must always position ourselves so that we will never ever be tripped up or cut off guard. You may be thinking, Frederica, now come on. Really? Really? You and I have the ability to do it. You know what? Think of it this way. As a parent, you don't know that you have parental skills until you become a parent. Until there is a baby, there is a child, there is a senior someone that you now are responsible for, guess what's going to kick in instinctively? The necessary skill sets that are pertinent to make sure that the individual that you are now responsible for, that I'm now responsible for, is taken care of. See what I'm saying? The same holds true as we give attention to the various aspects of life to reflect wellness in every area. You and I must have a spiritual developed connection. We must know that internally who we are, what we were created to be. I'm a Christian. So when I'm talking about for me, I know who I am. I know why I was created. I knew I know that I was created to be effective, to change lives on purpose so that I will not miss a beat in fulfilling my destiny track. I need you to sit and give pause to that for yourself. Make sure that occupationally you can't be replaced. That if you were to leave your place of employment, a huge gap would exist. This is very important in the developmental process, both from a personal and a professional perspective. Let's keep going. When we talk about personal alignment, where is your anchor? That's a pause type of question, isn't it? Where is your anchor? Do you have a dream that is big enough to maintain your focus? Let me ask the question a different way. How big is your why? Is your why effective enough that no matter what, no matter how many disappointments, how many no's, no matter, how many setbacks, no matter, how big is your why? What keeps you anchored to maintain personal development? What keeps you anchored to maintain structure, to maintain discipline, to maintain engaging or engagement or engaging with the right people, with the right crowd? You know what? You and I should have people in our lives that's pulling us. And we should have people in our lives that we are pulling up. Why is that important? Because it keeps us focused of giving and receiving. Isn't that good? When you're helping someone else to move from point A to point B, you're giving. And when you are allowing someone else to pull you up, you're receiving. And that anchor will not move. It won't. When that is happening, it will not move. Why is that? Because accountability is in place. You and I are making ourselves accountable to someone who is looking up to us and to someone who is looking to pull us up. Doesn't that make sense? So ask yourself the question. This is another pause question. We're still talking about following your yellow brick road. So ask yourself the question. Where are and what are your personal anchors that will keep you focused? For instance, another for instance, I'm full of for instances. Here we are, I think, 
we're getting ready to experience spring and summer. I said that facetiously. But here we are, we're about to experience spring and summer. So what happens in the springtime? We love being outside, we exercise, we have cookouts, we fellowship. So in the spring, you and I have a different mindset about our presentation, about how we present ourselves. In the springtime, hopefully, you and I are working out, we're eating better. Why is that important? It's a part of the personal alignment. It's a part of having an opportunity to make impact in the lives of others. For you see, everything that you and I do moving forward in order to be successful in fulfilling our yellow brick road has to be mindful of knowing that others are watching, others are depending on us, others are listening, others are watching long and hard enough to determine if that is someone, if you are the person that they are mimicking. Make sense? Excellent. So again, Ask yourself, what are your personal anchors? Is it faith? Is it dream? Your dreams? Are they your dreams? Are they your family members? Are, is it your heritage? Is it your culture? Is it your friends? Is it your children? What keeps you in maintaining personal development? How big is your why? Let's keep going. Now, from a pet professional perspective, you and I, I just mentioned this, we must have mentors. You may be thinking, Freddie, to have a mentor, I have to be vulnerable. Exactly. That's correct. You have to have someone in your life that you trust and that you know they're not going to mislead you. They're going to push you. They're going to make you get beyond that place of average, get beyond that place of excuses, get beyond that place of procrastination, get beyond that place of not having personal motivation. That's what a mentor is going to do. They're going to make you move from where you are now. Let me put a pause here. They can't make you do anything. Nobody can make adults do anything. But they're going to be really intent because you went to them, you identified them. So they're going to be really intense in helping you to get to where you said you want to go. You need to connect with associations of your profession. Again, if you're currently an employee, you need to be making yourself as available as possible, excuse me, in the workplace to build and to grow and to develop your skills. Connect with individuals, identify individuals in the workplace who are in the profession that you're in, but who have exceeded beyond where you are and where you want to go. That person is going to give you insight from a perspective perhaps you've not even considered. And that person is going to cause a thought process like none other for you that will cause you to think of some things, purchase some books, ask some questions, develop some questions. You, you see where I'm going? Make you consider, maybe I should go take a class. Maybe I should take a speaking course. Maybe I should become a part of the association of ABC. Not the network, but example, ABC. You fill in the blanks of what that association is. The goal is to ensure that as you maintain and identify your personal anchors, that you have the same exercise taking place on the professional side. What are your professional anchors? Who are your professional anchors? Are you doing your nine to five ritual and getting off from work, driving home, getting home, laying your keys down, taking your shoes off, and pick on, pick up the next hat, take off the day hat. Not enough. There is so much more attached to your name and your life. So, in our professional and our personal development, it's going to cause us to become efficient in our time, with our time. That's right. 
you may be thinking, well, Freddie, what does time management have to do with personal and professional alignment? Everything. Everything. For you see, you and I have to be effective in planning and connecting with the other association that you are identifying right now that you need to be a part of. You're going to think about perhaps some people who you've been watching afar off and how it appears to you that their life is just moving. And if you pursue to have a conversation with one of them, at least one of them, what you're going to hear are results of time management. You're going to hear how they're getting a lot of things done within the exact same amount of time that you and I are given every day. Each of us have 24 hours a day to work with. We each have to decide how efficient am I in those areas. We need to identify, I'm efficient in this area. I'm efficient in this area. I'm efficient in this area. However, I need to make some adjustments in these areas and then put it all together so that as we begin the process of unfolding, like peeling back an onion without the tears, of course. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. But peeling back those onions to getting to those places that we really need to make adjustments in order to obtain and maintain success. So let's keep going. So here we are. Do you remember The Wizard of Oz? Of course you do. Well, Dorothy was so excited that she was told if she got on the yellow brick road, her yellow brick road, that she would get back to Kansas. So at this juncture, the yellow brick road looks pretty good, don't, don't you think? Okay, so she has the basket, she has Toto, she has the red shoes, so there's support, there's familiarity, there is comfort, everything seems to be working, everything seems to be going along just fine, and then, now, the real work begins. As you can see, she's on the yellow brick road. You and I, really, are on our yellow brick road. But it doesn't always stay or look or appear to be so nice and neatly reflected, does it? Then life happens. Life happens. And when life happens, in some instances, we want to backpedal. But remember, I asked you, how big is your why? Your why and my why has to be bigger than what life presents. As you can see in this picture, the yellow brick road is still visible, but it's been flooded. And some of the bricks have been flooded. And they've been detached from that beautiful former picture of the yellow brick road. But let me ask you this question. Just because you have experienced a tragedy, perhaps, or a trauma, perhaps, or a death, perhaps, or a loss of job, loss of your home, does that mean that you are to let go of your yellow brick road dream of a lifetime? Absolutely not. You have to decide that regardless of what life presents, regardless of what it looks like, regardless of the pain, the disappointment, the tears, the frustration, the anxiety, the setback, regardless of that, your why is big enough that you are not going to be deterred from finishing your course. Did you hear what I said? I'm talking to you. You can't give up. You can't stop. you got to push beyond the flood. Your vision has still, it must be crystallized on the canvas of your imagination. 
while you cannot externally see it, internally you must maintain the vision of your dream. You must maintain the vision of getting to your destiny, just like Dorothy maintained of getting back home to Kansas. You must maintain of getting to your destiny, no matter what. Where there's pain, if you need counsel, seek it. If you need to go to see a certified physician, seek it. You do what you need to do to address what you're currently faced with, but do not release or let go of your dream. Have you ever met someone who have experienced tragedy, setback, one after the other? But their countenance and their conversation was always focused on the success of getting to the place that they have dreamed about. No matter what, you need to Google successful men and women and listen to their stories. Or better yet, you need to start journaling, if you haven't, your own story. And for those who are journaling, read your own stories, read your testimonies, read your own success stories. Why? Because those success stories are so beneficial when you're in a place of uh, setback. They're going to remind you of where you're going. Everybody's with me. All right, great. Let's keep it moving. Now, once you get yourself together in your head, after you've experienced that trauma, in many instances, the situation can get worse before it gets better. The thing I loved about this picture when I found it, it just gave the words yellow brick road, even though literally this picture reflects she is in major distress. But it doesn't matter. We have to look beyond what we see. You and I have got to remember before we were in our mom and dad's womb, not our dad's, our mom's womb, before our mom and dad got together, the destiny was already established. It was already determined. This here situation that you're currently in, expressed by life, should never, ever stop you. Ever, ever. I need you to give pause to that. Remember when we looked at the wellness wheel? and I identified that there is a spiritual component that must be balanced and in place. Sometimes when you are so, in, so intense, when life is so intense and distressful, you have to get quiet. You have to go and meditate and get quiet and close your eyes and just bring everything to a pause so that you can rejuvenate. Remember my illustration of when we are sharpening the lead pencil. Life is sharpening you right now. Might not feel like it. It might not look like it. But you are being sharpened and the character is being developed and you're you're able to get quiet more and more efficiently and be a, and you're and more and more efficiently you're able to become creative in your thought. How do I get this done? How do I Press beyond this place. You can do it. You can do it. You get quiet and you pray. Ask for help. Ask him. I refer to him as the Lord. You may refer to him as Jehovah. You may refer to him as the man upstairs. What you and I know is that there is someone that is greater than us who has the wherewithal, the love, the desire the want to, the how to, to assist us in getting to our yellow brick road. You with me? All right. So now, whew, we've gotten through the storm. We've gotten through the flood. We've gotten through the hurricane. We've gotten through the setback. And as you can see in this image, the yellow brick road is still visible, but there are some broken pieces. Not a problem. Now it's time to regroup. You and I must be very, 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 I can't say very enough, very careful at this juncture what comes out of our mouths. You must be very careful, and I, of what we hear. Very careful 
of who we're listening to, who we're getting direction and instructions from. Some people looking at this picture would think, oh, girl, there's too many broken pieces here. You might as well give this up. And someone else can come along and say, there are only a few broken pieces. You can work with this. Which person would you want to hear from at that moment? Even if you had no hope, when the second person walked up and said, there are only a few broken pieces here, you can do this. Their words will produce life to your need for resuscitation. Those words will resuscitate your thought process. Keep this imagery there. You're being resuscitated. They're telling you there are only a few broken pieces. You can do this. And so now it's time to regroup. Now it's time to re-strategize. Now it's time for that mentor, having those counsel conversations. How do you suggest? How do you recommend? Who do you recommend? You will be amazed by the information that you will receive just because you choose not to give up. Allow the broken pieces to become opportunities of success for you. Allow the broken pieces to bring the personal alignment and the professional alignment together and intertwine and create the bridge that is necessary to keep you on track to get to your yellow brick road. You with me? Bottom line at this juncture, now you must Stay focused. All right, here we go. So here it seems to be an image of normality. You see Dorothy? She is walking with Toto. It looks like she's got crowd support. She's no longer just by herself. But if you also, you recognize that there is now a red brick road. Be careful that you don't embrace a counterfeit. Be very slow to speak before you listen to the entire presentation. What do you mean, Freddie? Someone can present to you a lot of bells and whistles that may suggest to get you to your yellow brick road. But you must be sure that you stay focused to the, with the last set of instructions that you receive to maintain and to obtain your yellow brick road. Perhaps what's presented to you is not for the season or the time that you are building your yellow brick road. It may be for another time. It may be for your long-term strategic goals and plans. So be very mindful that you don't be taken off the path that you're on as you pursue to receive success and to obtain success as you walk through this process in maintaining and let's see when I say maintaining I'm talking about the progressiveness yeah the progressiveness that you have developed up until this point you want to maintain that progressive thinking critical thinking and you cannot be strategic in your thought process until you're critical in your thought process moving with tenacity, moving with focus, moving with intention, moving with the intent to get to point B with nothing deferring, nothing interrupting your progress and process. You understand what I'm saying? So let me kind of bring it home to this juncture. Personal and professional alignment. You have your anchors in place and you've been building on them through this process and you have your mentors and your professional connections in place. You want to maintain both through this process. Even though you're no longer underwater, even though you're able to breathe and exhale, you want to still maintain both. Because remember, you don't want talent to take you someplace that character can't keep you. So you got to make sure that both sides of this process are balanced and both sides 
are being oiled and both sides are being massaged and both sides are being groomed so that you don't get off and become imbalanced in this process. Make sense? Excellent. Let's keep going. Oh, you see the sun? Do you see the sun? Do you see the structure of this yellow brick road? Do you see the green grass? Do you see the stars? Here you are. You're at a place where there is continuity of your yellow brick road. There is continuity of accomplishment and continuity of success and continuity of development. So here at this place, you have to remember how you got here, the help that you received, the spiritual development help, the intellectual assistance, the environmental, the social, the mentor, the association. You want to make sure that you remember all of the help that you received in developing your yellow brick road dream big process that brings you to this place. You want to remember the individuals that you are pulling up, and you want to remember the individuals that are pulling you up. You want to share your processes. Don't ever have a closed hand, because actually when we are personally developing and professionally developing in the same vein, we can't have a closed hand. You won't be able to. You will want to tell others how to do this. You will want to share with others how you were successful in getting through those trenches, getting through those dark days, getting through those meager days, getting through those days where you weren't sure you were going to get through. You want to be able to share that with others. Why is that important? Because that's a part of our destiny. Our destiny was not just to reach our goals of success, but our destiny is also to bring people along with us. If you look at the George Frazier's again, if you look at the Oprah Winfrey's, if you look at the Bill Gates of the world, if you look at the individuals that are in your circle who you are literally watching or benefiting from, how they're just giving and pouring back information, you'll get the picture. And the big picture is successful people, one, they always leave clues, and two, they always want to bring you along. The deal is only you and I can decide if we are ready for the ride. Because once we put our hand to the plow for this ride, if we look back, that means we're not ready. We're not fit for the ride. The ride to success is not an event. The ride to success and the ride of success is a journey. It is a journey. We're going to be taking off stuff throughout this journey with consistency. Let me give you an example. Years ago, I used to love pork. Loved it. I'm not speaking against anyone who loves it. Of course, you continue to eat it. I'm just talking about me. This was something I never, ever imagined that I would no longer enjoy. But when the time in my process, in my journey, presented itself, that it was time for me to let it go for personal development reasons, I was obedient to that process. And today, I am the better for it physically, which is important to both the personal and the professional alignment in moving in this process of success. Everybody's with me. Great, so let's keep going. And everything that I've shared with you today, if you don't remember anything else, remember this. Both the personal and the professional alignment, they must be intertwined. Must. They cannot be separate and apart. They cannot be compartmentalized and we be successful. Because you want success to last forever. You don't want it to be in a moment or in a vacuum. And it may be in different shapes and sizes, success that is. However, you still want it to last. So that means that you and I must be cognizant 
that our personal and professional lives must blend at all times to reach success. Everybody's with me. Great. Keep going. Now, these are people, including myself, whose stories are phenomenal to me. I have national and internationally known pictures here, and I have personal pictures here of people who has made impacts in my life in ensuring that regardless to what drawbacks, circumstances, tragedies may be, may surface, may pop up unexpectedly, it doesn't matter. It, they cannot, it, one, they, many, cannot stop us. The tragedies cannot stop us. We must be focused. Our whys must be big. Your why must be big. You must look in the mirror and tell yourself, girl, boy, you can do this. You can do this. You can do this. That's what you have to tell yourself. You can do it. If you have questions, listen, I want to hear from you. I want to connect with you. I want to be able to assist you if that's what you need. So I'm going to give you some information, some easy access ways to me. First of all, you can look me up on Facebook. I have a Facebook page, Frederica, F-R-E-D-R-I-C-I-A, Cunningham, C-U-N-E. G I N. Or you can go to my company website, H R W W of course, H R in Motion LLC dot com. The or you can always reach out to me at two four zero eight three eight seven one four two. I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to having an opportunity to connect with you, to be a part of your journey, to be a part of your success, to come to your celebration party, to come to your open houses, to be a part of your graduation, to be able to celebrate with you on the new babies, all of that, all of that. Success comes in various forms, but it's still success nonetheless. It has been a pleasure talking with you, taking your hand. Be sure stay on course and follow your yellow brick road. Have an outstanding day. My name is Jafrida Brown, and I am CEO of Brown Accounting Solutions, LLC. I am your financial and business compliance expert. Brown Accounting Solutions, we provide financial and business compliance services for small to medium-sized businesses and the self-employed. Um, what I want to talk to you today about is the keys to winning federal contracts. Now, each federal agency sets a goal each year for their prime and subcontract subcontracting opportunities um, and the federal government has set aside about 400 billion dollars just specifically for government contracts and with the goals that each each agency sets up and also the federal government as a whole they've already set up specific set asides which are your women-owned small businesses your small disadvantaged businesses um, small businesses service disabled veteran owned small businesses and hub zone or 8A certified businesses. Um, the federal government has set a goal of 5% of that pool of money going to women owned small businesses, 5% going to the small disadvantaged businesses, 3% going to the service disabled veteran owned small businesses and 3% going to the hub zone 8A um, certified businesses. Now, in fiscal year 2012, 
the government actually awarded about $16 billion just to women-owned small businesses. So they met about 3.9 or 4% of their 5% goal. And for the small disadvantaged businesses, they actually exceeded their 5% goal and they awarded 8% of this $400 billion to those businesses. Um, they awarded about they they met their three percent goal for the service disabled veteran owned businesses and they actually awarded about maybe three point oh three percent and also for the hub zone um, certified businesses they they awarded about two percent so they met only met two percent of their three percent goal now for the small business set aside as a whole the government awarded about twenty two percent to small businesses, which was about 90, 90 billion dollars. That's that's a lot of money. Um, one thing I want to point out is the woman-owned small business set aside has only been in existence for a few few years. So for the women-owned small business set aside to be meeting about four percent of their five percent goal is really good, but there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. Um, there's there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes right now for the women women owned small business set asides. Um, with women owned businesses being the fastest growing segment in the world, you know it's only fair um, that they are able to get a larger portion of this four hundred dollar billion four hundred billion dollar government contracting pool. Now, one of the things that I want to do with me being a former senior auditor with the Department of Defense, the um, Defense Contract Audit Agency, I'm very, I'm very familiar with what the government looks for um, on the government contracting side and what can help you and what can hurt you as a contractor. So what I want to do is I want to be able to help more small businesses no matter what set aside you fall under, as long as you're a small business, to tap into this wonderful world of federal contracting opportunities out there. Um, but you have to be willing to do what needs to be done up front to, to, to make sure that everything that needs to be done up front is done to prepare your business for government contracts because it, it is a lot of moving parts with government contracting. Um, there are different federal contracting regulations that you have to be aware of and you have to learn and be familiar with. Um, and this is where it's very necessary to develop a good federal contracting team. Because the main goal of the government is to protect taxpayer dollars. Another goal that they have is they want to provide funding to small businesses so that you can grow and also so that you can create more jobs because we know that small businesses are the backbone um, of America. So we, the government wants to make sure that they're providing ways for you to grow and also to provide more jobs for the economy. Now, when it comes to federal contracting, your contract pricing and cost um, must be allocable, all allowable and reasonable. And you must have adequate and compliant internal controls and accounting systems. And these systems have to be able to accumulate, allocate, and report government costs the way that these federal regulations stipulate, which is um, FAR, which is your federal acquisition regulations, DFARS, which is um, the defense federal acquisition regulations, CAS, um, which is your cost accounting standards, and there are other government acquisition regulations as well. Um, there's even a specific set of regulations if you are a nonprofit seeking government opportunities. Um, so this means that your pricing and your contract costs are always under the magnifying glass. So they definitely need to be right up front. If you can get a government contract for your business, I mean, it, it can make your business just simply explode. So if you think about it, how do you think a lot of these huge companies got to where they are today? They did it through federal contracts. 
And the good thing about federal contracts is it provides consistent income. Like, for instance, if you get one federal contract, you may have a contract that has a base year and it may have three, four or five optional years. So that means that contract continues on for several years. So you're getting this guaranteed income coming in as long as you're performing on that contract each month from the government. Um, I want to point out, too, that the government, the government buys products and services just like we do as consumers. The government needs things like paper clips. Um, the government needs people to help them develop um, cost-saving strategies. The government wants people to provide professional development training to civilian workers who are maybe deployed in other countries or even right here on U.S. soil. Um, the, the federal government needs buildings um, to lease. They need um, real estate property. They need help with exporting and importing products. Um, they also need innovative technology. And one thing that the government also buys, which may sound kind of funny, they will hire people to provide haircuts for soldiers. I mean, there's all types of things that the government purchases. So if you are providing a good or service that the government can buy, then you can possibly get a government contract. And I also want to point out, it doesn't matter if you are a one person, self-employed company or if you're a company with 300 employees or whatever, if you have a certain product that the government can purchase and you have everything prepared your company to do what needs to be done, you could possibly win a government contracts. And just a real life example, when I was with DCAA auditing government contractors, there were times when I were, would have to go and do an audit on a contractor and I would be going to somebody's house. Yes. And, and this is somebody who may have just won a million dollar contract with the government and they're providing whatever product or service that their company provide, um, produces to the government. And I'm going to their house performing an audit. I've gone to um, places and perform audits. People are handing me envelopes and, and boxes <laughs> with the documents in it and things. But these people are providing this service or product and the government has purchased it from them. Now, there are um, a lot of moving parts when it comes to government contracting. Um, and I want to discuss with you today some things that you may not hear a lot about. I want to really dig into the notes, nuts and bolts of government contracting. Now, you may hear information about how your company needs to be registered in SAM. And um, SAM is the replacement for CCR, which is the old registry that the government used to register companies um, who wanted to be federal contractors. And also, you may hear discussions about how you need to have a DUNS number to be a federal contractor and how to get one. You may hear information about how to certify your company, what type of certifications um, would work for government contracting, you may hear about the different set asides, like I just discussed at the beginning. Um, you may also hear about the importance of learning and knowing what FAR, CAS, DFARS, and all these other federal regulations are. And you may get information about where to go and look and find these opportunities. But one thing that I want to point out is that you may not hear a lot about how very important and necessary it is to produce adequate pricing and costing for government contracts. And what I believe is the most important thing is developing compliant internal control and, and accounting systems. Um, because like I mentioned before, the government's main goal is to protect taxpayer dollars. So they're really going to be looking at the costs what you're saying that you're spending in your company to provide this product or service to the government. Um, so what I, I, I want to point out too that 
One of the things that I discuss a lot with business owners all the time is how very important it is to have a good accounting system in place. And this is for your business as a whole, not necessarily just for government contracting. It's just as a whole because um, when you have a good accounting system in place, it helps you to adequately measure your financial health of your business. It helps you to know where your business stands at any point in time. You have everything in one place. All of your transactions are in one place, one location, and you have adequate accounting records, accurate records of whatever, because your accounting system not only keeps up with the actual accounting information, but you can also keep track of um, employees, time, labor. Um, You can keep track of your inventory if you have any, um, all different types of things that you can um, keep records of in your accounting system. So it's very necessary that you have a good accounting system in place. And I just want to point out that if you don't have an accounting system at all, then you definitely can't do government contracting because that's the very first thing that they review when you bid on a contract. Even um, sometimes whatever federal agency that you're um, bidding on a contract for, they may ask DCAA to come out and do an audit, which which they call pre-award audits. They may come out to doing on your accounting system, your internal controls before you even are awarded um, a contract. And they definitely are going to come back after you win a contract. They'll come back multiple times and perform different types of audits during the period of performance of that contract. Um, well, when it comes to your internal control system, it includes your accounting system. Um, it can also include your estimating system, your labor system, your billing system, your purchasing or material system, your budgeting system, um, and also a compensation system. Now, all companies don't have every single one of these systems in place. But of course, like I said, every company needs to have at minimum that accounting system in place. And also the internal control system includes Um, procedures that the company performs for contractor risk assessment, monitoring, and also information systems and communication. And with me being a former senior auditor with DCAA, when when companies hire me to come in to consult, to provide training and help when they're bidding on, planning on bidding on government contracts, I come in and I follow the same exact steps that a DCAA auditor would follow. And in reviewing the accounting system and other internal controls, the very first thing that they're going to do, whether it's a pre-award audit or a post-award audit, is review your accounting systems. They have to initially develop a risk assessment of what type of risk you are to the government. They want to make sure that you actually do have an accounting system in place and that you do have some type of internal controls in place. So this can be done, like I said, even before you win a contract and especially after winning a contract. Um, Section 252 of DFARS, which is the Defense Federal Acquisition Regulation, discusses 18 components that your accounting system must have in place for government contracts. Now, one thing I want to point out is if you're planning on doing government contracting, you don't have to purchase a separate accounting system. You can use the same accounting system that you use in your daily operations. The only thing that has to be done is you have to um, identify those transactions that are specifically related to whatever government contracts that you're working on. They have to be identified in a specific way. And... um, the accounting system is basically reviewed to meet the requirements of DFARS 252. If it doesn't, then um, what would need to be done is taking the steps to set set it up to meet these requirements. And also, the accounting system must show cost um, based on FARS, um, based on FAR 52, FAR, 50, FAR 31. Um, CAS, which is your accounting, cost accounting standards, and other federal um, regulations. And when it comes to developing your pricing proposal, 
Um, FAR 15 has step-by-step -step instructions on how your pricing proposal should be set up and how it should be formatted, what information should be included in your pricing proposal. And when DCAA comes in to do an audit and they're reviewing the pricing proposal, they're using a um, proposal adequacy checklist to go by to make sure that you your proposal meets all those requirements on the FAR 15. And um, when I work with clients, I use this same checklist to make sure that the proposal is uh, formatted and contains all of the information that FAR 15 requires. And another part of the pricing, which heavily depends on your accounting system, is um, developing adequate direct and indirect cost. And the biggest issue that I've seen with, with this with contractors is using the wrong type of allocation basis for to develop your indirect cost. Um, when it comes to using an allocation base to develop your indirect cost, the allocation base has to be whatever is the most beneficial base for your company or either the base that causes the cost in the cost pool um, that you're using um, because basically to get your indirect cost you have to take whatever your cost pool is and divide it by whatever that allocation base is and again like I mentioned this is important because the government's goal is to protect taxpayer dollars and that's one of the biggest reasons why risk is assessed at the beginning when DCAA re reviews those internal controls and I mentioned earlier that it's very important to develop a good government um, contracting team. Um, you definitely want to hire consultants who have experience with federal contracting. You want to make sure you have a good business developer on your team. The business developer can go out and find those opportunities that would work for your company. And it doesn't necessarily have to be just federal Contracts, and when I say federal, I'm talking about um, well, federal government contracts. They can be government as a whole contracts. So that includes your federal, state, local, municipal type contracts. So that business developer can go out and find the best opportunities for your company. Um, you also need a good government accountant who understands contracting accounting. Um, you definitely want to have a good proposal writer on your team, somebody who can use the correct verbiage and put in that price, the proposal together. And also the proposal writer works with the accountant to make sure that the pricing part of the proposal is correct. And you also would need a good admin assistant, someone who can make sure all documents are completed, make sure all your certifications are done and up to date. Make sure your registration, your registration in SAM is renewed each year when it's time to renew. Making sure that your company is registered for all the different vendor or supplier lists that are out there that you're that provides um, that are looking for companies that provide like yours that provide the services or products that they're needing for their companies. And one thing I want to point out is that the government has developed what's called a protege mentor protege program. So the government agencies themselves do not connect um, contractors with other companies who maybe want to become um, proteges of those companies. That's on the companies themselves to go out and find those companies who provide those opportunities. But that's another way to get into government contracting. You can gain the experience you need by, by partnering with a contractor who has that experience and they know what it takes to win government contracts and to keep government contracts and to get more government contracts. Also, in um, subcontracting is another way to get involved as well. And also partnering with other companies to form joint ventures is another way to get into government contracting. And I want to talk about some of those 18 requirements that I pointed out earlier from DFAR 252. Um, one of the requirements is that the accounting system must have a sound internal control environment, accounting framework, and organization structure. 
Um, another important requirement for the accounting system is that it must be able to properly segregate direct cost from indirect cost. You must be able to show what costs are directly associated with the contract and what which part of your indirect costs are associated um, with the contract. Um, the accounting system must be able to identify and accumulate direct costs by contract. Um, the accounting system must be able to accumulate costs under a general ledger. Um, and we call the general ledger the heartbeat of the accounting system because that's where all of your transactions feed into. Um, the accounting system also must have a good timekeeping system that identifies the employee's labor by intermediate or final cost objectives. And intermediate and final cost objectives are basically like projects, programs, or contracts that you have going on at the time. Um, the accounting system also must have a good labor distribution system that charges direct and indirect labor to the appropriate cost objectives, which again are your contracts, programs, or projects you're working on. And one of the most important things that the accounting system must do is be able to identify and exclude unallowable costs. Um, FAR Part 31, which is your contract cost principles and procedures, lists all the different types of costs that are unallowable on government contracts. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't have these costs in your company. It just means that you can't include these costs on government contracts. And this is one reason why you definitely need good written policies and procedures in place because, say, for instance, you're using QuickBooks. QuickBooks is good for government contracting up to a certain point. Um, it's not as advanced as Dell Tech, SAP, Procos, and other government accounting systems. Um, with QuickBooks, it doesn't have the capability like those other accounting systems to actually identify those unallowable costs and exclude them from those cost pools. Now, this is where it comes in that you definitely need to have good written policies and procedures in place because you need to specify in those policies and procedures how you identify these unallowable costs and how they are excluded. And you, you would need these policies and procedures whether you're using QuickBooks or any of the other accounting systems. But it's definitely important if you're using QuickBooks because of the fact that it's not as advanced as those other, other accounting systems. Um, it is very crucial as well to have written policies and procedures in place when it comes to your labor and timekeeping to explain um, how labor is accumulated and reported. Um, in discussing like segregation of duties, you don't want the same person who signs the timesheets to cut checks to the employees, those types of things. Um, and DCAA really puts these areas under a microscope, so it's very important. And when I was with DCAA, most of the things that were reported in audit reports that had findings um, at the top was labor and timekeeping. It was always something going on with labor and timekeeping, um, indirect rates, unallowable cost, internal control systems, billings, executive compensation, that's another issue, and um, also compliance with CAS, which is your cost accounting standards. Um, these were issues, contracts before I was with DCAA, they were issues while I was with DCAA, and they still continue to be issues. Um, now for DCAA and, and when they're doing their audits and finding these things. And um, again, I just want to point out that it's very important to document your policies and procedures and identify an unallowable cost and how they're excluded um, from government contracts that you're working on. Um, also, I wanted to point out that it's very important to provide adequate training. If you have employees who are going to be working on whatever is associated with your pricing or cost for government contracts, you want to make sure that you provide adequate training for those employees. Now, some of the um, more labor-intensive type contracts are going to require that you provide some type of training for your employees when it comes to timekeeping procedures and um, 
the labor procedures and also making sure that those employees are doing what they're supposed to do as related to their job description. So those are those are some some things that that's like I said, not talked about a lot. You don't hear about a lot, but they are like the nuts and bolts of what you need to to make sure you have in place for government contracting because they can, if not um, done co correctly, they can cause you to not win a contract. And if you win a contract, it could cause you to, to lose that contract or either um, the government will fine you until you get everything compliant. They'll fine you even take some of the money back that they've already paid you on, on contracts. So nobody wants that to happen. And one thing I want to tell you about is um, Women Impacting Public Policy, WIPP, um, they get together with American Express Open and they founded a program called Give Me Five. Give Me Five is a program that provides education and resources and tools for women-owned small businesses who are interested in government contracting. And I'm also doing a webinar for um, WIPP, WIP, and American Express Open for their Give Me Five program on May 28th um, at 2 p.m. Eastern. I'm doing a, a webinar where I'll be discussing how you can prepare for a DCA audit, what they look for when they come in, and some of the other important things that I mentioned um, earlier. So if you're interested in attending this webinar, you can go to WIPP.org and go to their events section and register for my webinar. There's also other webinars going on as well, which I think are really, really good webinars and very important to learn all you can uh, before jumping into government contracting. And I also want to invite you to connect with me. Um, I want to offer you something. I want to be able to provide help for you. So I want to provide a free assessment for anybody who's interested in getting into government contracts. I can take a look at your company, your system to make sure, to see where you are and let you know what you need to, to, be, to do to prepare to become a government contractor. So if you're interested in this free assessment, make sure you text the word contracts along with your name and email address to 205-514-5177. Again, text the word contracts along with your name and email address to 205-514-5177. And um, please make sure you include your name and email address because I um, won't know who you are if you don't. And also, I want to invite you to connect with me on Twitter at Brown Accounting. Also on Facebook, my business page is Brown Accounting Solutions, LLC. And um, I also have a personal page on Facebook, which is Jafrida R. Brown. And also my website, which is brownaccountingsolutions.com. Again, Twitter is Brown Accounting. Um, Facebook, Brown Accounting Solutions, LLC. And also my personal page, which is Jafrida R. Brown. And my website, which is brownaccountingsolutions.com. And I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to my presentation today. And I hope that I provided some valuable information for you. And again, I invite you to connect with me so that I can help you if you're interested in becoming a government contractor. Thank you. Joelle Martin, and I get to be your Director of Training and Education in the Power Networking Conference. I am thrilled and delighted to have your attention for these few seconds. The work that I get to do, and I'm very, very passionate about it, I get to change lives for the better, and I've been doing this for more than 15 years. So although I only have a few hours with you uh, when you come into my workshop at the conference, I want you to know you're going to have 100% of the best tools I have. 
I've worked with CEOs in Fortune 500. I've worked with millionaires, and I've worked with truck drivers. I've worked with school teachers, and I've worked with senior citizens. And the one thing they all have in common is they want to be the best person that they can be, and that's my specialty. You know the expression, you can't change the fruit without changing the root? Well, I get to the root of your greatness. I get to the fruit. So you not only with me will learn how to do things, you will learn how to be ways you may have never experienced before. Transformation happens in a, in a nanosecond. And with me working with people, I remember sitting on the bench with someone at the last car networking conference and changing a life for a lifetime with 15 minutes. Imagine what we might do together in two hours. My specialty is experiential education, and I've got two workshops that I'm going to be doing. Yes, you can sit down and talk with me to my conference, and uh, we can share a cup of coffee, but I want you to know about the two workshops that I have. One of them is called Be a Leader You See in the World. Access your ability to transform so you own your dreams with confidence and can lead others to do the same. That one is B8, all right? So don't be late for B8. Um, and that work there is about being a leader with anyone and anywhere. And I tell you, my brothers and sisters, I have transformed lives when they couldn't even speak my language. One secret that I have that I will share with you in this bit is that I know you've probably heard about the law of attraction. I want to teach you about the law of attention. When you're not paying attention to the goodness and the opportunities around you, you don't attract what you most deserve. And every one of you who has the time to look at this really quick message to your heart, from my heart, you all are very precious beings with great purpose and vision. And if you're not paying attention to the right things, you won't attract what you most want to have. That's one of the things about changing the root. Something else about changing the route that will come out in that event as well as my one for young people. And I get to lead off the Young Professionals Program, and I'm thrilled about that one too. You know, when I walk in the room, expect me to say this to you, my young brothers and sisters. If you had three wishes guaranteed to come true, what would you wish for? And I will say this thing in my other one because I lead every coaching session with that. Whenever I work with someone new, I ask those questions because that's what I am committed to. I am committed to your commitment. That you can count on. What are the three wishes guaranteed to come true that you would wish for? What do you want in your life? And I want you to get this. It is not just about the books that you read. It is not just about the speakers that you listen to. It is about the you that is doing the attracting. It is about the you that is doing the attention. Without attention, you will miss what you most want to attract. So we, we want to deliver this in our Power Networking Conference and have everyone walk out the winners that they are. That's very, very important to all of our faculty. I know for George Frazier and myself, it has been vitally important as we selected the men and women that will be in service to you. And if you're looking at this and you haven't decided whether or not to attend, let me tell you this. Your life will never be the same again. Transformation is only a step away. The people that are leaders in the world are those who are willing to have a big dream, a vision, some goals. Even if it's not clear to you right now, but they have a vision and a goal for their lives. And this is the key piece about the law of attention and your attracting what you most want to have. It goes beyond you having a dream, my brothers and sisters. It goes to your willingness to do what it takes to live that dream. So I'm not going to tell you that you're going to walk out of that workshop with me having all the keys to the kingdom, but you will be well on your way because it doesn't take me long and there's nothing better I like better than working with young people and working with young people of all ages. So if you're ready to thrive, not survive, if you're ready to get abundance and prosperity in your life, if you are willing to be the leader you are meant to be, 
to walk head high with purpose and self-confidence and self-esteem. If no matter where you are in the world or what company you are working for, you are ready to take that leap, then join me. When I speak about the young professionals local money group, I think a bit more on that too. The title is, Be the Greatness You Were Born to Be. Transformational secrets that will assure your success. And these are the secrets that are being taught in all major corporations around the world because I know, I've led them. Wouldn't you like to know what these secrets are? If you're just beginning your journey, your career path, wouldn't that be important to you? And yes, it does start with your vision. And yes, it does have to do with one very, very important quality that I haven't mentioned yet. And that is your personal, personal ability to tell your story in the way that will get the attention of those you want to attract. There are some skill sets involved, and you will walk out of my workshop with them. What does it take to tell the story of your life, of your career, of your vision, in such a way that people lean in and want to know more about you? Lean in because they want you to be the one that gets that job that they have to offer. Because they want you to be the one that leads their programs. What are the secrets? Once you leave me, you'll have a few more of them at your disposal to use to make the life that you so much deserve. And so for the other folks, and now by the way, this this you will see in the program that this will say for young professionals, but anyone who knows me knows that when you walk in my door, you are welcome. So you can be a young professional of any age to join me in that workshop. Now, I'd be the leader you want to want to see in the world. I'm looking forward to finding people who want to become trainers, transformational trainers, transformational speakers such uh, as I am. I'm looking for people who are global thinkers. Uh, maybe they aren't world travelers. Maybe they haven't done the work in Russia, in China, in Malaysia, in London, and someone like I have. But I want to be... That workshop may not be for everyone. I want to be with people who want to roll up their sleeves because they are the ones that are willing to lead the movements. They are the ones who want to take the transformational tools and really go out here and change our world. Those are the people I most want to be present with. We a world here that needs us. We have a world here that needs you. Someone with your vision with your sense of purpose <coughs> and your divine knowledge. The world is waiting for you. I, quite frankly, am waiting for you. I so look forward to seeing you at the Power Networking Conference. I am Dr. <coughs> Excuse me, Dr. Joelle Martin, and you will find me at the website PositivelyPowerful.com. The company is Positively Powerful by Ed West. And again, that's Positively Powerful because that's how I see all people being. What you will also learn about me is every year, it's my heart work to honor women and have the Positively Powerful Women Awards. I'll share a little bit about you because that has everything to do with the law of attention. Also, I'm the author of how to be a positively powerful person and get your me brand awareness the positively powerful way. Me brand awareness is all about personal branding. And how did I have to come to write about personal branding, being a transformational trainer, a global trainer? <laughs> I used to have a full service advertising agency in New York City. I was one of the first women of any color to have done that. And uh, what happened to me was that I discovered my passion for people and my purpose and my uh, hunger to change our world for the better. And I remember distinctly having that key question, but 
what do you want to do with the rest of your life, Joel? That was me talking to me. And I decided then, I, it wasn't about selling another bottle of beer. It was about changing lives. And that's how I became a trainer. Okay. So not, in, uh, not only have I done that kind of work, um, I've done my own conference learning. I've hired my own coaches. I went back to school to learn about what it is about transformation. What does it mean? And how do I say that in a very clear way? Because it mattered to me. I went back to school and I got my master's in psychology, my PhD in communications. And, you know, really, my brothers and sisters, it's not the letters after the name, but I want to share that. That is, that is not why I share that with you. I share that with you because that was, that was my path to you. That was my best way of learning, of changing my life from being a poor black woman growing up in Toledo, Ohio, to you now. Now, being a world child, world child of changing lives for the better. I love my work. I love people. I'd love to see you at the Power Networking Conference. Thank you. God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you in June.